recently there were photos going out of uh, a young fellow dressed in what appears to be Big Day Kahuna walking around on the Temple Mount. Now, that's a, that's a good sign. It means that there's going to be progress. Why? You know, they do not allow us currently as Jews to look too Jewish on the Temple Mount. To wit, you can't wear your tefillin. You're not allowed to have a recognizable talus. Oh, you could wear your tzitzis in some other form. You could wear a talus cotton or some other, you know, a robe or a vest or whatever it is that uh, a few people I know, including the rabbi, they have some sort of, I don't know, what an aphode. They have an aphode, basically, with tzitzis on it, and they could get away with that. And recently, others have gotten away with talus. But generally speaking, you can't really look Jewish. Big day kahuna are very important. Why? Because they are required for the temple service. In order to go about conducting any service whatsoever in the temple, we need actual kohanim dressed as actual kohanim. So the the bad guys and the regime, uh, but I repeat myself, do not uh, recognize these clothes. They don't know anything about it. To them, it's not necessarily Jewish. You're not going to tell, let's say, Hasidim, they wear very Jewish-looking clothing. There's nothing inherently Jewish about wearing Bekashas and Strimals or uh, Blues, Bro- Blues Brothers clothes, right? But that's what Jews wear, so they can't tell Jews to like strip their clothes and stop looking Jewish. But uh, for things that look ritually Jewish, they do stop. But they do not recognize Big Day Kahuna. By the way, someone asked, what do Levium wear? What should Levium wear? I guess it's up to the Sanhedrin or whichever authorities in the temple will be at the time. They decide on a uniform for the Levium. Maybe they don't have to decide on, uh, on a uniform, maybe just a dress code, or maybe even no dress code for the Levium. We don't have it in anywhere that the Levium wore something specific uh, as, a, as a group. Yes, there is uh, mention of certain Levium dressing with aphodes themselves, but there's nothing that we have in our records that there was even uniform or a dress code or anything like that. But I would imagine that... The, the temple authorities would decide such a thing. For those of you just joining us, we are under a boil water order. Seems to be Suffolk. No one seems to have gotten sick from the water tasting anything funny, but boiled water is available in the kitchen. So we've poured ourselves some glasses of boiled water waiting for it to cool off. Make sense? Okay. And refreshments are also available in the kitchen or in the closet. There's even some two types of wine. We have white wine and red wine. For those interested. What? Well, in, somewhere in the closet, somewhere in the fridge. Look, look in the, whatever you can find in the kitchen, basically. You know, no promises. You want, and there's apples, by the way, here. Also, I forgot. Here are the apples. Happy New Year. Where was I? Okay, so the guy's walking around in Big Day Kahuna. So that's a good that's a good sign that they didn't stop him. We'll need a lot of people wearing Big Kahuna, Big Day Kahuna. But is there any halachic issues? Well, the first halachic issue is that, technically speaking, if he intends to conduct the service, then he has to be wearing those Big Day Kahuna. But it's also important for those who intend to participate in the temple service, they should know that in order to just enter the Azara, it is not sufficient to, let's say, immerse in the mikvah properly like most people do in order to enter the temple mount, the outer courtyards of the temple. If you, let's say, just want to be on the temple mount, it is sufficient for you to be a tevul yom. That means you went to mikvah early today or you went last night, but after sunset. So you're not a complete tome, but... You have not had Ha'arev Shemesh. The, the, you haven't been around since uh, since the stars came out. And your, your uh, I guess your purification is incomplete. Nafkamina. If you go to Mikvah this morning, you were a Balkari, you went to Mikvah this morning, you could walk around the Temple Mount. But if you want to participate in the service, whether as a Kohen or as a Levi or as a Yisrael, you have to have gone to Mikvah yesterday in order to enter the Temple Courtyard. So this fellow, if he was intending, if he somehow were to get his hands on a lamb, okay, a lamb to offer the Korban Talmud, he would go through with it. He has to make sure he went to Mikvah yesterday. Indeed, the Kohen, if he wants to wear Big Day Kahuna, first immerses just to put on the Big Day Kahuna, but that's not a din and tumantara. A Kohen has to go to Mikvah just to put on Big Day Kahuna in the morning. And he also has to wash his hands and feet. But if he wants to enter, and wants to enter the Azara, he has to have gone to the Mikvah yesterday, which uh, asked... Which brings up the question, wait, the coin Gadol is supposed to be hanging out in the temple all day long, right? The Rambam says he should have his, he should live in Jerusalem, and he should be at the temple all day, except for a break, you know, go home, maybe a little bit in the, during the middle of the day. And sometimes the coin Gadol is necessary because his wearing the tzitz and being present is what allows us to bring Korbanot Betuma, which is the status today. If you have temple service tomorrow, you need a coin Gadol Betuma standing around with the tzitz just for it to be kosher. So you often need the coin Gadol just to be present and in the Azar. How does the Kohen Gadol ever produce children? He basically has to be in the temple every single day, which means that he has to immerse 
if he wants to, if he ever become a Balkari, he wants to engage in, in, in procreation, he would have to make sure that whenever he goes, he goes to mikvah before sunset. Okay, go before sunset. If, while it's still today, he has to go today. Yeah, if you were, the yeah, the next day. If the Kohen Gadol were to, let's say, be like most people and take care of his issues at night before going to sleep, for example, then even if he were to dunk in the mikvah first thing the next morning, like a good chassid, he would not be able to attend the temple that day. That disqualifies him. So the Kohen Gadol, if he wishes to procreate, would have to do so basically in the middle of the day and then go to mikvah right afterwards. Okay. And that's a little bit difficult. It means he's he's doing what he's doing during the middle of the day. And Chazal looked down on that, right? That's not a proper act of claim. So it must be the Chazal say ten in its case of need. So a dark room, etc. But it's a little bit it's a little bit iffy also because the Kohen is a requirement to be married and to just one woman apparently. Remember we saw this before. The Kohen is not supposed to be a polygamist. God be so, and he's not supposed to have multiple wives. He's just supposed to have one wife. Okay. And then we brought up the, we talked about this two years ago gets promoted so there's no problem necessarily or yeah it's, uh, that's that's part of the question he, he or one of the wives is nomana so the g- grandfather clause but he's not supposed to take more than two wives and then we brought up the question it says Yehoyada the coin Godel, it says had two wives he said he married two wives and had children right and then he he's only on coin Godel. we have a lot of biographical information in the and they say no it, in the Aramaic form it means that he arranged two marriages for the the young king he was meant to rank. That's what it means. But the, the Lushan is ambiguous there. That's what happens when you put Aramaisms in late biblical books. It's not clear who we're talking about. Okay, fine. So uh, that's the first issue. This guy, if he really was trying to conduct the service, he should be wearing, he should have gone to mikvah. But let's say it's just a costume. It's made exactly like Big Day Kahuna, but it's not officially Big Day Kahuna. It's not been dedicated to temple service. It's not been given to the Tzibor. You can't just make linen garments exactly like the Torah describes and say, ah, these are Big Day Kahuna. They have to be officially registered. So if he's not wearing officially registered Big Day Kahuna, he's just doing this as a demonstration, okay? A political demonstration or for whatever other reason, which, uh, by the way, I'm 100% supporting, then that's fine. If it's real Big Day Kahuna, then we can get into a controversy. What's the controversy? Like we saw also, it must have been three years. Yeah. So the, the Gemara says in Yoma, and I forget, oh, where's the page in this? It's like some, one of the, I think it's Memtet or Nuntet. The Gemara there is talking about the Kohen Gadol, how he would take off his regular Kohen Gadol clothes in order to read the in order to read the Torah and the Azara. He takes a break, or sometimes he could just continue wearing his Kohen Gadol clothes, his white linen clothes. And then it says at the end of the workday, the Kohen Gadol goes home. He puts he takes off his big day zahav and he puts on his frock in Hamburg and goes home. Right? I would imagine that the Kohen Gadol would, would dress that way, considering his station. I mean, when he's not what? Well, yeah, yeah, he, he would, or maybe. Or if he's a little bit more modern, like uh, Rav Palm didn't wear ever a frock. They say he always wore a short jacket. He was a little bit more American. But either way, the Kohen Gadol would put on his regular clothes and go home. Now, the Halacha says that a Kohen is, was allowed to wear his Big Day Kahuna all day long, basically. They were given for Hana, so if it's a work day, and even if he doesn't win the pious for whatever reason, he has no service whatsoever to conduct. He's not going to be conducting any service. It turns out he's already dressed in big day. Who knows? He can continue wearing it. But the Rambam says the avnit has to come off. Okay? The avnit is made out of shatnas. And if he's not serving, he shouldn't wear it. And the Ravad says, no, technically speaking, he can wear his avnit all day long. That's the argument. There's proofs to both positions. So this fellow was apparently wearing a kosher avnit. Oh, boy. Now, if it's not big day kahuna, not official big day kahuna, he should not be wearing... Uh, a real avnate. Why do I say a real avnate? Because an avnate, if you're even trying to say, like, I want this to become Big Day Kahuna, it would have to have shotness in it. Avnate is made of four materials, three three of which are actually just wool. Different, three different color wool, the Tzchela Sargamon Tulashani, and linen. So if this guy was wearing something that was basically a, a proper avnate, then the only excuse he could have for wearing it was that he was actually intending to, pour, to perform the temple service in honesty, which means he went to the mikvah yesterday, and this is real big day kahuna, that means it's registered, it belongs to the tzibor, it's there, dedicated to temple service, and he's 100% legitimate being a kohen. So unless unless he was really doing everything kalocha and had a full intention to do so, at least an attempt to do so, he should not have been wearing an actual avnate. If it's just a, a fake avnate, let's say, you can wear a big day kahuna, say it looks like they, they sell kids, yeah, you'd get lashes for it, for wearing shot in his, they sell children uh, big day kahuna, 
especially coin gadol ones, to wear on parim. Obviously, those are made of polyester and cotton. So if he was wearing all cotton, uh, you know, cotton looks could look like linen. If he was wearing big dekuna made out of white cotton, and an avnit just made out of colorful cottons, so that wouldn't, wouldn't be a problem. But if he's wearing an actual avnit, then we would have an issue. So I want, want to speak to this fellow. I want to know what his intentions were. But it's nice to see, and we should get used to these types of things. We should also get used to Tameyim wearing colored clothing or, or black clothing, and the people who are tohorim wearing white. You know, this this uh, standardization so that people know to separate themselves from those who are impure. And we should also get used to, I don't know, maybe a little bit of tumantara around the house. There's, that's why it's good we say before Passover, what's the best way to protect yourself from tumantara if you have to eat kudshim today? Use well, everything. Chad bami, yes. Everything chad bami. Sit on your keter chairs. And if you want, you can have a keter bed. Okay? A plastic bed frame with a polyester mattress, foam rubber mattress, those types of things do not acquire tuma. Now we don't have to worry about Mishkov and Moshev and the rest of them, Heset and the rest, the rest of everything. And uh, of course, you should use Kalim that also cannot be acquired tuma. In the olden days, they used to use stone or things taken from the sea, you know, made out of whalebone. Ah, whalebone, whalebone Kalim are great. You know why? Came from the sea, so it can't be a cobble tuma. Anything, or get yourself knives made out of meteorotic uh, iron. Also, it's not macabre tuma. Okay, that's kind of rare. Yeah, it didn't come from Earth. Anything that came out of the sky or came out of the sea is not macabre tumor.